A very good morning to all of you, class 8, and welcome back to this class. Today is the 18th of September, and we will continue uh, with the lesson, The Treasure Within. This lesson is taken from the supplementary textbook. We started with this lesson yesterday, so I will continue explanation of the lesson, and we will discuss the question answers, and I will give you some extra question answers from this lesson, which I would want all of you to please uh, write down in your notebooks and uh, now the learning outcome from this lesson is to identify identify oneself hidden talent and utilize it to achieve success like Hafiz contractor has done in his life right so let us go through the lesson now uh, I was explain I've explained this lesson and yesterday the explanation was completed till here till now we have read uh, that uh, Hafiz contractor is giving interview and he is uh, describing his student life uh, student life in a boarding school and how he was a very uh, naughty student and how he did not pay attention or did not show interest in his studies for a very long time and then when he reached class 11 he was called out by his principal and he was given a talk which was for only five minutes and that really helped Hafiz contractor and he changed his outlook and he started uh, studying. However, in SSC exam, he, uh, he could achieve only 50%, which his principal said that consider this as a distinction for yourself because um, he uh, got this 50% with his hard work because earlier he used to copy in his exam to pass he was not a bad student but then he would not study at all that was the reason why he did not do very well in academics and his uh, interest would be in sports he was captain of the uh, school cricket team and he would play all the sports and that is where his interest would be even he if he is uh, punished or if he is get uh, you know reprimanded or he get caned by his teacher he will forget that thing the very next moment because he has to think about how to play where to play when to play and that is all was uh, his motive in the school to have uh, to enjoy his time and he would not only yeah, if he is not interested in his studies he will distract others and he will you know disturbs others and in that way he will distract his classmates also then uh, after the school after his schooling life we get uh, we learn that he did uh, um, he joined jai hind college in mumbai he wanted to join army and police but he was uh, not allowed to uh, uh, his uh, mother insists that he does his graduation from jai hind college when he joined jai hind college he uh, there was subject option and he had taken he chose german However, the German teacher expired. He passed away after a certain uh, time. So the college says that either you can change your subject, you can take French instead of German, or you will have to change your uh, uh, college because they would not be able to take a new uh, German, uh, German teacher at that moment. So Hafiz contractor says that, you know, he got admission into that college with influence because his percentage his marks was not good enough so he said that there was no choice that he will get admission anywhere else so he took French now while learning French he said that although I had learned French seven years in school but he since he was not interested at all in academics he did not uh, you know he did not uh, know even 10 sentences in French so he was helped by his cousin and uh, in uh, in French now this is where he came across architecture okay this is where he was exposed to architecture not came across but he was exposed to architecture his cousin husband was an architect and Hafiz contractor would go to architect's office to learn French and there he found one day one man was drawing a, a, a window design and Hafiz says that your window will not open and then they had a bet and it turned out that Hafiz was right in what he said that the design which the man was making of window was actually not useful so that would not have worked so this was really you know this really surprised um, 
his cousin's husband and then he said that to drop everything and join architecture this is where we end the lesson last now uh, after this uh, we went to meet the principal of the college so now we means hafiz and his cousin uh, cousin's wife or maybe his mother also they went to meet the principal of the college the principal uh, said that remember in the um, in the beginning he said that you know for architecture architecture entrance exam to sit in the architecture entrance exam the minimum requirement of result was 80 to 85 percent but hafiz had only 50 percent so the principal said that i will allow you to take part in the entrance exam he said i will give you a chance to sit in the entrance exam but if you do not do or do well i will not let you join so no matter even if he was good in uh, you know designing if it was good in sketching his principal said that i will allow you to sit in the entrance exam because that itself is a big opportunity i'm giving you if you don't do well you will not be allowed to join architecture and he says that i got a plus in the entrance exam and from that day it was a cake walk cake walk means something which is very easy to do so he says hafiz contractor says i got a plus in the entrance exam a plus is supposed to be the top rank the top grade right and he says that from that day onwards everything was very easy for him studies was easy for him any kind of course because now it was this is where his interest was this is where his talent was this is where his, his talent lie i had never planned but i knew something look like uh, but i knew how something look like from the top he says that hafiz says that i have never planned to be an architecture but uh, an architect but i knew that how would something look like from the top if i see something from the top i knew how would it look like uh, i had never planned never made a plan but i knew that how something look like from the top i had never known what a section was but i knew if you cut a plan what it would look like so this is a section means it's a it's a term used in architecture he said that i never knew what is a section but i knew practically i knew that what would it uh, what it would look like if you cut a plan if you cut it into half what it would look like i stood first uh i stood first class first throughout that year that means uh, uh that after that means first class first that means he did very well in academics throughout his architecture course throughout the uh remaining his academic years i believe that all this understanding came from what i used to to uh, to play and do during school so now he credits this that all the understanding of design all the understanding of this architecture it came from what i used to uh, to play and do during school okay so what did his uh, what 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 help him in his school i had a friend called behram divecha we used to have competition between us for designing forts guns and ammunitions this is quite interesting he says that i had a friend in school and we used to have a competition for designing forts forts means like uh, structures buildings and guns and ammunition each of us would design something in effort to be different so this is what he used to do at school like he used to design and uh, uh, he would design to and make an effort to look different to look unique in school when i was in second or third standard one of my teacher mrs gupta saw my sketch and told me see you are used this in everything but else your sketches are good so mrs gupta had told him when he was in class 2 or 3 standard that you are very bad you are not good in anything else but your sketches are good when you grow up you become an architect so his teacher had said once that when you grow up you become an architect i did not know at that time but she was right later i after i became an architect i went back to her and tell her so this is what he mentions that he went back to meet mrs gupta and say thanks to him and tell her that i have become an architect now the inf uh, interviewer asked well why do you think you did not like studies was it because you felt you could not cope could not deal with the curriculum this was question asked to him that why did he not like studies was it because he did not uh, he could not cope that means cope means he could not uh, uh, he could not adjust himself to or he he could not deal with the curriculum hafiz says 
I was very bad at language, science and geography. I could deal with maths. Uh, sorry, I was very bad at language. Hafiz says I was very bad at language. Science and geography, I could deal with. Deal with means somehow I can manage with science and geography. Maths was very bad. He says I was very bad at maths. I was just not interested. I was studying for the sake of studying. What they taught me today, I would forget after two days. I would not bother myself because there was no application of mind there to begin with. He says that, you know, in these subjects, he could not apply his mind. Remember, he said that, you know, he could not memorize, he could not retain anything in his memory. But he will be able to memorize it, he will retain it. I had a photograph memory. He says that he was bad at language, science and geography, somehow he would... Uh, you know manage maybe because it has lots of diagrams it has more lots of uh, you know models maybe because of that maths was very bad maths you know you cannot memorize uh, maths right you cannot memorize maths so even if you see a diagram or a photograph or a picture you cannot memorize it so this was one technical problem with Hafiz that he could memorize he could remember something when he sees a photograph or a design but somehow that did not apply to language and to maths then he says that you know i would not bother myself because i was not worried about it i was studying just for the sake of studying because there was no application of mind there i could not put my mind could not apply my mind because i was not interested at all he is asked then did you think that that uh, what they taught in school was boring or did you feel that once you understood the concept of what was being taught you lost interest in the rest of the lesson so the interviewer is asking that do you think that what was taught at school was boring or you feel that once you understand the concept you will uh, which is you are we are taught you will lose interest in the rest of the lesson so hafiz says this is a very important question like was the whatever taught was boring to you or you feel that if you understand the concept you will lose interest in the rest of the lesson he says living in a boarding school is difficult we were just living from day to day so he says that you know it was altogether a very difficult life for us nowadays the, uh, nowadays there are so many tests back then whenever we had tests we used to just copy the teacher thought that we had done our work so here hafiz says that you know back then there was not a proper system to to uh, check whether i am i have understood the concept or uh, whether we have uh, we are interested in the subject so the the system was lacking okay and we just had to uh, uh, sit in the test give the test and in the test we used to copy and the teacher thought that you know that uh, we they, they have understood they have done their work so there was no mechanism to actually identify and to see whether we are actually interested in the subject or why are we not showing interest in the subject okay this is what he is saying uh, and then he is asked there is a there is a contention um, contention that giftedness and learning disabilities go hand in hand do you think this applies to you giftedness means something you know somebody who is very um, who is a special in something you know who has a special talent who has a special ability and learning disabilities would be uh, somebody who has a challenge in learning somebody has disability means some kind of a challenge you know some kind of a difficulty in learning so he's asked do you think that giftedness that means this uniqueness of learning of talent unique talent and the learning disability they go in hand in hand he says well some students from my class those who always stood first or second are doing today doing very ordinary jobs he says that you know some of my classmates who are very good in academics they are doing ordinary jobs i have come across this situation in so many again he uh, interviewer says i have come across this situation in so many difficult uh, many different places where people tell me that their class toppers are doing very ordinary today so here hafiz says i think living our lives that made us i think living our lives made us street smart this is very important if he says that you know living our lives doing what interests us 
exploring our interest, following, pursuing our hobby. That made us street smart. That means street smart means smart by doing things independently, not by cho choice or by force. So, rather living our life, you know, with a uh, you know in a surrounded with only bookish knowledge, okay, rather keeping ourselves involved only with booking bookish knowledge. What made us smart was we explored our interest. We did things independently that made us smart this is what he's saying because many a times what happened uh, those who focus only in academics they do very well in their uh, academies they get very good results however they lack that uh, what do we call here is street smart street smart that means they lack that smartness which you don't find or which is not taught in books then he is asked, that is because the personality and skills are were there. You were able to find expression in a manner you were comfortable with and you defined every rule, uh, defiled every rule so that nobody would stop you from doing what you needed to do. Okay, so here he says, the interviewer says that, you know, uh, your personality and your skill you you were able to express yourself you were able to express yourself in a manner you were comfortable with you had the personality you had the skill you uh, you know you express yourself and you did things in your way in the way you were comfortable and here he says i was more interested in other things for example while in class, if it starts raining outside, I would think of flowing water, how to build a dam to block it. I would think about the flow of water within the dam and how much of water the dam would be able to hold. That was my interest for the day. So, he would, you know, it's not that he was only interested in uh, sports, but he had imagination. Okay, and he would explore his imagination. He will try to find answers to the questions which, have, which he has in mind. When students lost a button while playing or fighting, they would come running to me and I would cut a button for them from chalk. Very interesting using a blade. Okay, so he says that, you know, I used to fix these problems, small little problems. And discipline in the school was very important and no student could afford to have a button missing. So, like... We know that he did his schooling from uh, from boarding school. So he says in boarding school, discipline was very, very important. So, you know, you cannot be seen around with uh, shabby clothes or with uh, without a button. So, and this is how he used to fix small little problems for his classmates. Then he is asked, uh, then he is asked, coming to you, how to decide what kind of a structure you want to give your, uh, give to your client. He says, I look at the client's face, his clothes, the way he talks and pronounces, the way he eats, and I know what his taste would be like. So when he is asked how does he design structure for his client, he says that I look at the client's face, his clothes, the way he talks, the way he eats, the way he pronounces things. That means he studies his client. He, he do an in-depth study of his, he observes his clients and he studies his clients and then he identify what would they like, what would be their preferences. I can relate to people in the way that would be comfortable. I sketch very spontaneously. Spontaneously means without planning, without thinking. He just, whatever comes to his, he sketches on a paper on the spot. That paper I give to my people in the office. Okay, so this is how he function, this is how he work. You do it instinctively. So this is what his, uh, the, the interview asks, that means with instinct. Call it instinct, call it arithmetic, whatever. Now it comes to me like mathematics. Now this thing comes to him like mathematics, like if he likes this, this will happen. If like this, this is what he would like. Putting design 
construction psychology and sociology together and uh, putting design construction psychology sociology together and making a sketch from all is that is called mathematics so now he compiles he brings all these together to make his design okay this is mathematics for him how does he do now he he puts designs construction psychology and social uh, sociology together and make a sketch from it all that is mathematics to him now and here here we almost come to a full circle where contractor has derived his own interpretation of mathematics what is his interpretation taking it from a subject he hated to a subject he now loves dealing with okay so now he remember in the beginning he said that i used to get nightmares about mathematics now he is taking he is dealing with it he is doing his making his design and uh he has now that is how he work for professionally let us do this question answers hafiz contracted wanted to join police for police uh, police force why because his mother had told him not to to continue his graduation you will find the answer here in the architect's office how uh, half his contractors was advised to drop everything and join architecture why because he was uh, because his cousin's husband identified um, the hidden talent in hafiz contractor that he could design things that is why he was told to drop everything and join architecture what was mrs gupta's advice to hafiz contractor that you know you are not good at anything else but you are good at uh design so you become a contractor when you grow up what made her advise him to do so because he was very good at drawing sketches how did he help fellow students who lost their button he would cut out a button uh from a chalk using a blade right that is how he would help his friends which rule he did he break as a school boy plenty of rules there are many rules he has break in the school he would uh you know distract the class he would copy and then uh, he would uh, not do his homework so there are many rules you need to find it and write it down what is hafiz contractor definition of mathematics what is his definition of mathematics putting design construction psychology and sociology together and making a sketch from all that is mathematics this is his definition of mathematics now how would you want to define mathematics your definition do you like the subject this is your definition your answer uh is it some likely that someone who is original and intelligent does not do very well at school S should such a learner be called a failure if not why not okay somebody who is original and intelligent but does not do very good in academics so should we call such pe uh, such uh, students failure well i don't think so right why not because they have their talent is different their interest is lies somewhere else their talent is in something else so we cannot call them they are uh, just because they are not good in academics in certain subjects does not mean that they are failures okay success is not defined by our academic marks please elaborate this question who in your view is an unusual learner unusual learner means somebody who has a unique gift okay unique talent who is in your view an unusual learner somebody who has a unique gift who has a unique uh, talent what can schools do to draw out the best unusual learners suggest whatever seems reasonable to you this is your push, uh, answer whatever you feel that you know what are the things schools can do uh to draw out the best in unusual learners how can you encourage them okay there are some extra question answers which i have share i want to share with you uh what does the title of the lesson the treasure within means and highlight it treasure within the talent which is inside us okay the secret talent which is inside us that is what it means tre treasure within who is a fierce contractor what does he tell about himself to his interviewer how does he find his calling you have to find this answers you have to write down these answers mr hafiz at school was more interested in other things than his books 
how does he support this statement he mentioned all the things he has done he was good in sports he was a captain and you have to write those things okay how does hafiz give uh, to his client the kind of structure he wants he studies them he he observes them he studies them in the last paragraph it, it is mentioned mentioned how did the principal words influence hafiz contractor this one is how did i in the beginning i have explained this that this is a very important right so please write down these five extra question answers in your notebooks children i complete this lesson here in case if you have any doubt please ask me in the live class or you can message me thank you